This is Cannabis Chunk. I've spent over 3,000 hours on this account attempting to explore the entire RuneScape map one chunk at a time. I have to complete every task in each chunk I roll before I can unlock a new one. I've completed many grinds ranging from hundreds to thousands of hours, but what's next? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to but a short and unscripted video about what is next. I have rolled 56 chunks in total on Cannabis Chunk and done some truly insane grinds. But the biggest grinds are still to come and so I thought it worth taking you guys through all of the potential chunk rolls that are coming up on Cannabis Chunk so that the next time you see a chunk roll stream you know the gravity of the situation and so let's get into it. This is my chunk map. Well, this plus the two Soul Wars chunks far to the southwest. As you can see, there are 30 potential chunk rolls that we can roll the next time we hit that terrifying button. And there are many that I'm very scared of. Having said that, let's start with the ones that we are not. So the first category of chunks we have are nothing chunks. These are chunks where either there's absolutely nothing to do or there's like one diary task. Chunks that I expect to take less than about five minutes to complete. The kind of chunks where we'd roll it and then we'd roll another one straight afterwards in the same stream. So these are the Fountain of Rune. Uh, which is chunk number five, chunk number 15, which is the south of Varrock. That one used to be Pura Puro, but is now just nothing. Uh, 17, 18, 20, and 24, which are some of our sort of northwest-ish wilderness ones. Uh, they don't have anything in, so there's quite a big possibility that we get one of those, like, oh, like about 15% that we get just one of those nothingy wilderness ones. And then also 29 and 30, which are the two Soul Wars ones. So Soul Wars Isle is not yet something we need to be concerned about. These chunks are the most boring, there's nothing in them, and they would just facilitate us getting closer to other grinds. 17, 18, and 20, I actually wouldn't mind getting some of those because I don't necessarily mind pushing further to the northwest. The King Black Dragon around there is quite scary for me because I don't know if that would be possible or not, but these would be okay chunks to get. The next category of chunks are what I would class as easy chunks. There are only two in this tier, and they are the Wilderness God Wars Dungeon, uh, which is number 22 on the map. This has the potential for Dragon Boots one day, and it also has like minor collection log slots like Ecumenical Keys and Steel Boots and this kind of thing. Um, people get it confused with like the main God Wars Dungeon. There are no bosses in here, so there's none of that craziness. There's just the, uh, the creatures that are in there normally that drop the Ecu Keys. So it's pretty much a nothingy chunk, but we do would have to get some like collection log slots that are in the one in one hundreds to get. So really not too bad, but would take a little bit of time. We'd probably shut the stream down for the day, get those, and then come back for a chunk roll stream the next day if that happened. Next in that category is the crazy archaeologist, number 26. In this chunk, there is a small fishing net, which may unlock some kind of fishing for us. I don't think we've got a shrimp spot yet, but it's definitely another kind of consideration. As well as that, that you can also then be doing um, the hunter method with the net traps and the ropes, the net trapping. Uh, I do have black salamanders and swamp lizards for that. Um, obviously, I'm level 89 hunter now, having done the Puro grind, so it's not too relevant for me, but if ever we hit the Hunter cape or anything like that, we do have the option at that point to catch some Black Salamanders for fast XP. So that would be quite good. Um, and then also from that, the biggest thing is probably the Rune Crossbow. I don't have a Rune Crossbow. My range training outside of the Wilderness is quite bad, limited to, you know, the Carol's Crossbow, Magic Shortbow, Crossbow, none of which outside the Wilderness are very good. So getting the Rune Crossbow boat would be massive. It would be particularly massive because we already have Soul Wars. And so we have an absolute ton of Rune Bolts, Adamant Bolts, Ruby Bolts, Diamond Bolts, Dragon Bolts, Onyx Bolts, literally 
every single bot that we've got, we've got tons of, and we can enchant them as well. So that would be an absolutely nutty upgrade for the account, but wouldn't actually take that long. So alongside that, there are a few easy collection log start slots, stuff like the Malediction Shards and the Odium Shards, as well as like the Fedora and stuff like that, but n nothing that would take l very long at all. And I do have the Thammer and Scepter, well, a Cursed Scepter now. So that would make this chunk kind of light work, but again, it would just take like a day. It would just take a handful of hours. So again, would end up in us closing the stream down and then starting it the next day for that. Um, additionally, I guess kind of between this category and the last one, we have chunk number 28. There are no unlocks in this one, but it does put us very, very close to 99 herb lore mining and smithing uh, because if we hit number 28 and then we roll one to the south and hit that sort of Taverly dungeon chunk we're going to be on the hook for the Herblore cape and that's going to be like the worst chunk that I can possibly get so uh, yeah number 28 is definitely kind of in its own category sort of in the nothing chunks sort of in the easy chunks, sort of in the worst chunks possible. So yeah, hopefully, I've got my fingers crossed we don't roll number 28. Now, rolling chunks is fun. However, what's even more fun is buying a gift for someone that you love, but it's hard to get right, right? Well, Ridge is making it easy to get right this year with up to 47% off across your favorite items on their site. I've been using a Ridge wallet for a while now and it's really opened my eyes up to how the right wallet can change your life for the better. I used to have this heavy burden in my trouser pocket or a big lump in my breast pocket that looked ridiculous. Well, no longer. The slim design has allowed me to carry everything I need whilst not looking like a fool. There are over 50 designs which all look really cool whilst also being made of premium and durable materials. Mine's made of Damascus steel and it looks awesome. If wallets aren't relevant to you, then the key case is another great option. I used to jingle and jangle around my workplace all day. Annoying. But now, all my keys rest in the Ridge key case silently and also fit in my pocket without being a bulky distraction. Head over to Ridge today using my link in the description, ridge.com forward slash fray, and enjoy 47% off for the duration of the Black Friday and Cyber Monday campaign. Next up, we've got the intermediate tier, and there is only one chunk in here. These are chunks that I think would take about one week to do um, and wouldn't be that bad. And the chunk that's in here is number seven, the Mage Training Arena. Uh, this is in there because, you know, you just have to complete Mage Training Arena, which would suck. And we would have to get full infinity, a master wand, uh, bones to peaches spell, all of that nonsense. It's not so bad now because I do have a method to get um, cosmic runes in that I have Pura Pura and I do have like four and a half thousand cosmic runes, something like that. I do also have like tens of thousands of nature runes and tens of thousands of lore runes. So this wouldn't be undoable, but would certainly not be that fun because we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to do mage training or in it in the most efficient way possible because we would have to recycle our cosmic runes to some extent. So this would take about a week. Not a very fun chunk, but not the worst, and it would put us slightly closer to Giant's Plateau, which would be about the best chunk we could possibly roll. Thank you to all of you watching for the insane support on this series so far. Each video is getting about 100,000 views at the moment, and that is insane. I'm currently trying to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of 2024, and I've got 4.5k to go and only a single month to do it. So please consider subscribing if you have been enjoying the Cannabis Chunk series so far. Thank you. The next tier of chunks we have are what I've classified as hard. These are chunks that would take about two to four weeks. So kind of savage, but not too bad. So in here, we've got three chunks. So number one is the Wilderness Slayer Cave in number 10. Uh, this would be a one in 16,000 smoldering stone grind on the Hellhounds, which could take five minutes or could take 
you know, four weeks upwards. You know, you, you never know when you're going to get that. One in 16 is very, very rare. And if we went as dry there as you did at the Revenants, that would be taking 80,000 Hellhounds, which even with the Wilderness Weapons burning through ether would take a long time. And realistically, these days, unlike during the Vetion Lava Dragon Grind, I don't have ether to burn. So we would either be having to you know, go back to the Revenants and get more, or we'd be having to do this with no ether. Either way, it's going to take a while, and one and 16,000 Hellhounds is a lot, and there's no guarantee it won't take more than that. Next up in this chunk we have, uh, in this tier, we have number 19, which is just south of the Grand Exchange, and it is the Cooking Guild, and this would result in us having to get 99 cooking. Now, cooking's not too bad because I do have the Canifis meat shop, but due to it being restricted before, uh, basically they fix, I, it wasn't a bug, I wouldn't say, but what I was doing was I was selling sharks to the cannabis meat, sh like raw sharks to the cannabis meat store on my main account and buying them on my extreme one chunk account. That was really good and a really fast way of getting cooking training, which is what I did to get, I think, level 85. Uh, but now that doesn't work anymore. And I would have to do it basically on the raw trout and salmon and pike and all that kind of nonsense that are in that shop in stock. It would involve a lot of running and a lot of cooking and a lot of buying. And it would be very tedious and it would take about a hundred hours, which should take me about two weeks, um, like two or three weeks. So that would be both boring <laughs> and take a while but yeah the cooking it wouldn't be too bad essentially and then last in this tier we've got chunk number 12 uh this is the scorpion pit in the deep wilderness and would essentially involve us getting two pvm pets number one being the chaos elemental pet this wouldn't take very long we do have a crossbow and it's only a one in 300 so in theory you should be able to just shred the chaos elemental pretty well um the only risk is that we don't have like a good access to like summer pies or anything like that so the food situation would be quite annoying and it would probably end up unequipping loads and loads of gear so it would definitely be an inefficient way to do chaos elemental compared to most accounts but it wouldn't be awful and then the scorpion pit is obviously the scorpion pet plus other associated collection logs and that again wouldn't be too bad i do have the accursed scepter so i would kill the scorpion relatively quickly but it's just an annoying grind and the Part, uh, uh, sorry, and the pet is, I believe, a one in 2000. So again, it would just take a handful of weeks to get done. I don't think it would be too bad unless we go really dry. But yeah, that's kind of the hard tier all in all. And, you know, if you've not noticed, we've not actually listed that many chunks yet between the nothing tier and the hard tier. So there are a lot of chunks to go that will be savage. The next tier of chunks we have is the very hard tier. These consist of two chunks being number eight and number nine. Number eight is Callisto, which would basically mean getting the Void Waker piece from there as well as the Callisto pet. Brutal, <laughs> because we saw how long it took at Vetion to get the Vetion pet. Four and a half thousand kills of Vetion to get that pet, and it took ages and there is a chance that that could happen again at Callisto which is why I've put it in the very hard tier which is grinds we're expecting to take about one to two months um I do want this chunk to be honest because getting a void waker on an extreme one chunk Iron Man would be very insane as well as it would be quite fun doing the multi-combat stuff at Callisto and we would have access to demonic ruins from here which gives us access to greater demons which may be relevant in the future for Slayer things um, so this would be a decent chunk to get I think all in all but it would take a long time and it's a very similar chunk to number 9 which is Venonatus again multi-combat a pet that we need to get it would just be a bit savage so i'm hoping that we do get this again because i do think the void waker would be very cool and it would be a very fun chunk to do but again it would just take a pretty long time one to two months not the worst 
The next category that we're going to be discussing here are the extreme chunks. These are chunks that will take about three to six months of continuous activity. You know, anywhere up to about a thousand hours all in, possibly more. Uh, so these chunks are categorized into kind of two little um, groups that are pretty similar. The first group is mining and smithing. These are chunks number 1, 3, 11, 21, 23, and 27. So as you can see, these chunks are quite diverse. They come from all over the map, but essentially they have one thing in common, giving me access to a bronze pickaxe. Bronze pickaxe, well, a level one pickaxe in general is the only thing keeping me off mining and smithing on this account. Uh, I don't know how I've dodged one this far for this long, but I have. I've got 56 chunks and don't have one. So we essentially have one mining and no way to train it. And that would change with any of these chunks. And that would essentially involve me getting 90 mining for the, you know, the top tier of shooting star, as well as 99 smithing to smith a rune plate body. Because we do have access to all of the high tier stuff, for smithing, but just none of the low tier stuff. So we don't have bronze bars, but believe me, we've got rune bars. So we would have to get a rune plate body smith on this account as well. Now, it's not as bad as you might expect, because actually, because we've got the dragon pickaxe, which we can use the special attack to boost our mining level by three, we actually only need to get 87 mining, which would definitely not be as bad as 90. And we also, because we have access to port phasmatis, we also have access to make a what's it called a dwarven stout mature which would boost our smithing level by two so we actually need to get 97 smithing as well which is still really high but when you think about it we're saving about 2.3 million xp that we would have to get that is crazy to think so like in terms of the the training methods we would have to get to level 97 smithing would be terrible and very slow. So saving that 2.3 million XP off the top will be massive. There's one other chunk in this, in this category which is very similar, but it does serve a distinct difference, and that is that it would be far better for me. And that is chunk number four, the Haunted Mine. So this does give us access to a... A bronze pickaxe, the same as the others, and it does unlock the mining and smithing, which is where the three to six month grind comes from. But it also gives us access to some good stuff. So it also gives us access to a strength amulet, but more importantly, a salve amulet. And because I've got 40 slayer and can kill the terror dogs, it gives us access to a salve amulet E. And that is a 20% attack and strength and uh, not range because I can't imbue it, but it gives us 20% attack and strength in the wilderness. Um, in fact, can I imbue it? Yeah, I can imbue it because I've got Soul Ward. So we can get a Sound of Amulet Eye as well. So we can have that bonus for range and magic as well. Um, but that essentially gives us far more DPS in some of our best methods to get resources. So uh, Vetion and the Revenants in particular are both very, very insane methods for a lot of skills. Uh, we can get, we can kill Vetion to get an abundance of bones as well as uh, construction XP in the form of oak planks. Uh, it gives us smithing XP in terms of gold ore. The Revenants gives us insane amounts of GP. It also gives us rune bars and adamant bars and this kind of thing. So having the salve amulet to do the mining and smithing grind will be massive because I don't think we're going to just be like mining iron and smithing it to get 97 smithing. We're actually going to be killing a lot of Vetion and a lot of Revenants to bank most of that. So having the salve amulet, having that like 20 to 30% boost in DPS will be huge. So... This one would be bad in that it would unlock mining and smithing, but it's the least bad way to unlock it. So if we unlock the haunted mine next, I won't be upset. The next category we've got is death chunks. And these are chunks that I would categorize as taking six to 12 months. So these are chunks where I'm expecting the hours to be somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 hours to complete. So there are three chunks in this category and they're pretty similar in terms of hours, but there's some that I would prefer to do than others. So number one in this, in this category is 
Edgeville, number 25. Well, not Edgeville, the monastery, rather, number 25. This would be a bad chunk because not only would it give us the mining and smithing that we got in the previous chunks because there's a bronze pickaxe there, but it would also give us the prayer cape, which is 99 prayer. Now, we're not as badly positioned as others for the prayer cape. We do have access to things like green dragons. We do have access to soul wars. We do have access to Vetion. But 99 prayer is still a big grind, especially when you don't have access to the Chaos Altar in the Wilderness or a Gilded Altar in a POH. So it would still be grim, but not as grim as it could have been if we'd got this earlier on and if we didn't have a lot of the Wilderness unlocked. Um, so yeah, that's not one we're looking forward to and would certifiably be a death chunk for us, but it's a death chunk that I reckon we could do. Next is Lumbridge, and Lumbridge is, you know, a notorious chunk amongst Extreme 1 chunks because of what uh, Limpwort and Happery and others have done there, um, and we would have to do the same grind, so we would have to get 99 woodcutting and 99 defense in Lumbridge. Now, that wouldn't be too bad for us because we're already most of the way there. Well, not most of the way there. We've got 80 woodcutting and we've got 85 defense. But crucially, we do have better training methods and better weapons than if we had started in Lumbridge. So those grinds would take, you know, I don't know, a couple hundred hours each, probably. So they wouldn't be too bad. But pairing with it on the top floor of Lumbridge Castle there is a bronze pickaxe. So we would also be thrown back into that 87 mining, 97 smithing grind as well. So it, uh, taking the 97 smithing as essentially a skill cape, essentially a 99, we basically have to get three skill capes in Lumbridge to progress, which would be a bit savage. So I'm hoping that we don't roll that. Alternatively, there are some good things about Lumbridge, which is why I wouldn't be so beat up if we got it. Out of the death chunks... This is the best one to get because it would give us access to Bob who would be able to repair our Barrow's gear. So that would be pretty cool because currently we can't repair any of our Barrow's gear. And it would also give us access to the PvP Lumbridge chest which could be relevant for us if ever we need to do like a rune crafting grind or a construction grind. Having that kind of teleport right next to a bank chest on a PvP world could be massive for us and then the last death chunk that we have which i'm very scared of and really don't want is the dig site and it's the dig site because again not only does it give us 87 mining and a 97 smithing requirement it also gives us a level one training method for fishing which is panning uh so that would obviously be terrible but it's not the end of the world because we do have access to uh, the slimy eels in the Mauritania swamp, but alternatively, we do have access to the dark crab spots in the wilderness, which means we would have to get 85 smithing on, not on 85 smithing, 85 fishing on slimy eels, as well as getting 87 mining and 97 smithing so that would just be grim so these death chunks can basically be categorized as mining and smithing plus extras and the extras kind of vary in terms of their hours and their tediousness and the rest of the chunk kind of varies in its like usefulness but we want to be avoiding these i think possibly lumbridge could be cool in the real long run but for the short run we want to avoid it the next category of chunk we have here are the super death chunks. Now, there are two chunks in this category that we really want to avoid if possible because currently they would be next to impossible with our methods, but in the future they may drop down to just normal death chunks. The first of these is number two, which is the Herb Law patch in Mauritania. So there's basically one task here, which is to farm a Torstal, which would be really grim so we basically don't have access to any good farming methods and we basically don't have any access to any amount of good seeds so essentially watermelon seeds and particularly snake grass seeds are the name of the game for training farming in this chunk and we just don't have good access to any of them. So um, snake grass seeds aren't too bad if, like Verf, you've killed 800,000 hill giants up to this point. Uh, but we're not in that boat. And so we would essentially be taking our best method 
would be to do about 40 million Hunter XP in Puro Puro on Eclectic Implings to get Watermelon Seeds. So not only would we have to get about 40 million Hunter XP, bear in mind it took us two months to get like uh, to get like 4 million Hunter XP, but we would also have to be leaving every like 80 minutes to go and do our patch and come back again. You've got to bear in mind with the Mauritania patch, it is miles away from anywhere. My and my closest teleport to the Mauritania patch would be to walk from Varrock. So it would take like 10 minutes, uh, yeah, about 10 minutes to go and do the run. And then we'd have to go back to Puro, catch more Waterman Seeds. By the time we caught some, we'd, then we'd have to off again to the farming patch. So this one would take ages and ages and ages, and it would just be so boring. Um, and it would just be, you know, uh, catching implings, farming herbs. Catching implings, farming allotment. Catching implings, farming herbs. Just that on repeat for years, like over a year. So that is something I don't think I've got in us now. If we get another farm patch, like for instance, we get a tree patch or we get a master farmer even, something like that, this becomes a lot more doable. And so, you know, uh, this is a chunk that I would probably backlog because it would take just too long, at least with the methods that we've got at the minute. The next one is even more of a super death chunk than the herb law, and that is the corp cave. So this is chunk number 13. There is another sub grind in here, which is the wilderness slayer caves. Uh, so that would be the same as chunk number 10, which would essentially involve us going and getting smoldering stone from hellhounds. We would do that aspect of it. That's not too bad. The aspect of it that we wouldn't be able to do is the corporal beast itself. And the corporal beast itself is brutal. So corp as a, as a boss I've done an Iron Man quite a lot, and it's relatively doable, and it's relatively easy, and it's quite chilled out, and I like it. But it is only soloable, and so essentially it relies very, very heavily on you having very overpowered gear. And in terms of overpowered gear, I mean things like Dragon Warhammer, Bando's Godsword, the Arc Light. All of these are, are items essentially drain Corp down to zero, and then you can just hit it to death with like any weapon, but primarily a Zamorak Spear. So in Max Gear, Corp's like not really a problem. In my gear, I think it is impossible for me to kill. So I wouldn't be able to drain it at all. So it would just batter me. It wouldn't have its defense drained, so I wouldn't hit it either. And essentially, I just couldn't kill it. I'd probably do like a, a couple hundred damage at most before it killed me. And then while you're not in the cave, it regens its hit points really, really quickly. I've got no means of getting there quickly because I don't have a games necklace. So I'd have to run from Farrak's Enclave every time. And basically, by the time I got back, it would be fully regenerated and I wouldn't be able to kill it at all. <laughs> so that is just off the cards. Potentially, what I would like to do if I rolled this chunk is get a token kill. And I think I can get a token kill. I have like 100 rings of recoil that I got from the entire Puro Puro grind because they're a, rare, they're a rare drop from there, but you do get them. And I think if I dropped like 500 food in the Corp Cave, took a load of rings of recoil in with me like 50 60 70 rings of recoil like nearly all of the ones we got from 5 million hunter xp i think maybe i could cheese out one kill and i think that would be cool and i think it would demonstrate why i can't do it because you've got to bear in mind with the court beast the pet for that boss is a one in five thousand and you've also got the jar of is it Joel of, jar of spirits something like that you've got a jar from there as well jar of dreams maybe that um that is a ridiculous rarity you've got the elijah and sigil which is a really ridiculous rarity like another one in four thousand or something and then you've got all the other sigils on top of that as well so essentially you'd have to be doing thousands of kills with gear that just it can't kill the kill the corp so you know if we were to do it it would be like do puro for rings of recoil do one kill with basically rings of recoil and like eating endless food um, which would be awful anyway because we've got no means to get good food. Like you'd be buying one shark at a time in Canafis and it would take like 500 of them for one kill. Um, so yeah, we, we, I think if you were to do that and do it until you got the Elijah and Sigil 
and the pet and the jar, you'd probably be looking at like 50 years of grinding, if not more. If someone wants to do the maths on that, that would be really cool. But essentially, this chunk's impossible. So these super death chunks, the Herblor one and the Corp one, these are ones that I won't do. So they're the only two out of the 30 that I would be skipping for now, or backlogging as unreasonable. I think they're both pretty unreasonable. We're looking at two years of Puro, or we're looking at about 50 years of Puro plus Corp kills. So I think that would just be, you know, we've seen Puro. I've done that. I've done it to death. I had some of my best videos on it, but it's done now. So yeah, these are the only two chunks that I would not do, and I would backlog, at least for now. The Corp one, we're probably looking at backlogging until I get a Bando's God Sword. I think once I get a Bando's God Sword, I will be able to drain it down to zero and it will be somewhat doable, even with like a Guthan Spear or whatever. But before that, no chance. Now, there's one chunk that I've not mentioned yet, and that is number 14, the Varrock Palace chunk. And there is a reason that I've not mentioned it yet, and that is because it is questionable as to what I should be doing there. So the reason it's questionable is because when I roll it on the chunk picker with the current rules that I've got, it brings back basically nothing. Uh, I've got to do like Children of the Sun or something like that, but that's it. I don't have to do any big grinds. But what is in the Varric Palace chunk is an estate agent. So from this point forward, I would have access to buy a house, a player-owned house. So in theory, I could teleport there, I do have planks, I do have a hammer, I do have a saw. So I could, in theory, train construction at this house, but the chunk picker's not giving me the tasks. And I think the reason that it's not giving me the tasks is either because I don't have a portal to teleport into a house, or I don't have a, not yet, like one of those house portals to like walk into the house, or it's because I don't have a good enough source of law runes. So I don't know which of those it is that means it's not giving it to me, but it's certainly one of those. Now, I want to kind of ask the question to you, should I train the construction at that point? I can physically teleport into the house and train it, or is the construction based on the uh, the teleport portal? It's hard to know because Limpwer obviously had the teleport portal before having an estate agent, so it was kind of pre-ticked for him in that regard. Uh, but yeah, I'd want to know what you guys think. I don't think it would be that bad because I do have a lot of planks banked up already. I think I've got something like 92 construction banked. But if it's not on the chunk picker, as per the rules, do I need to do it? <laughs> that's the question, really. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's that's one to consider and one for you to discuss in the comments. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well as the Corporal Beast maths. Uh, but, yeah, that is the last category, which is questionable. So, uh, yeah, what do you think? Uh, I think it's a crazy amount of chunks that we've got that are bad, <laughs> or not that are bad, that will take a long time. Uh, well over half of them, are we're looking at months. So I anticipate the next chunk roll stream being very, very hype, because there is a decent amount of nothing, there is a lot of bad, and there is a very slim amount of like acceptable and cool grinds, like things like the Crazy Archaeologist and Venonatus and Scorpia and Mage Training Arena are few and far between. Mostly we're staring down the barrel of how many? Uh, 10? 10 of the 30 chunks are mining and smithing chunks. So one third of them are mining and smithing. Uh, and a, 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 another subset of those are like grim, <laughs> mining and smithing plus. So yeah, if we can avoid those, that would be ideal. If we can avoid the super death chunks, that would be really ideal. But yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what chunks you're hoping that I get or chunks that you're hoping that I avoid. And thank you for watching this video. It is much appreciated. Uh, I will give a big shout out to the channel members, as always, who are Leon Austin, our first Torva tier member for a long time. Thank you very much to Leon for helping support this channel immensely. We also have the Amethyst tier members, Patrick Wright, Jern Scallon, Taufane, Mike Moran, Fuklas, Bodge Boss, and Aran. 
Thank you to all of those guys as well. We also have everyone else at the Rune tier and below. Thank you very, very much for keeping this channel running, keeping me supported and able to make videos for you. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.